What's up, everybody? This is episode 43 of EggCast with John Egger. I'm sitting here with my man, Eli, the producer. What's up? What's up? Yeah. Yo, I don't, I don't know if you knew this. Um, I'm not much of like a, a music producer myself. I'm kind of, I'm, in, I'm into music, but that intro right there, yours, yours truly. You may, yo, I was, I was wondering if that was you or not, but uh, yeah, bro. Uh, I'll give it to you, bro. I might have to get you in the studio sometime. Yeah, I mean, some of my stuff is like I like like I I, I like I, I made some beats when I first started like getting into it. I because I maybe only did it for like a few months on like just learning how to use like FL Studio. And I have like a little mini pad and like I was doing, I was doing okay with it, but like, I just like, I feel like I got to a point where I kind of stopped. And then like, I, when I would go try to go back in, I would try to like put a pattern together, but I would never get everything like all the way together. You know what I mean? Like I would hit like almost like writer's block kind of. Yeah, no, man, it's a, that's a vicious writer's block is vicious, bro. Like something you just got like power through sometimes. I, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, for real, for real. But um, yeah, the first thing I wanted to say is just like, if you have anything to promote anything like that, any type of that shit, just, you know. You can yeah. get that out of the way. Definitely, yeah. Uh, I have an Instagram account. It's Eli the Producer. E L I T H A Producer. That's on Instagram and Twitter. Um, you can see all the studios I work at, artists I've worked with, me making beats, music I've worked on. I also uh, am a founder of an independent record label in New Jersey called YKG Management. And you can follow nice. us on Instagram. It's called ykg.p. Again, it's ykg.p and that can kind of share some more things that we get into like live shows sessions signing artists and things like that cool man awesome yeah so that kind of ties me in like to my next question for you is that like since there's no live shows anymore and you know like um i know artists are kind of going to take a hit from this um i mean i'm i'm not that far into it but i'm like aspiring to be deeper in like the stand-up comedy scene and like those live shows are done right now too so like i mean as a producer and like talking to like fellow like artists like singers rappers stuff like that like what what have you been doing and like what have other people been doing in the industry to just like stay productive and try to like stay sane yeah well it's it's complicated because no one's no one's ever really seen something like this yeah yeah for real um i think it kind of shows which artists are versatile yeah i understand what artists, you mean. Um, some artists kind of like are only good in certain aspects. Like when you look at an artist's career, you look at social media, the quality of their music, uh, their live performances, their touring. These are all completely, they're kind of like combined through him, but they're completely separate aspects of income. Yeah, yeah. Gee, there's some artists that are, uh, that are really suffering right now from it like uh for an example for one of those types is uh the 1975 i know they had a big tour out oh wow yeah canceled, and their social media presence isn't really that big so they don't have a lot of new content coming out they don't have a lot of music coming out so i mean yeah. fortunately for them they have a very strong fan base where they can keep going through content yeah like that but for other artists it's you know what i mean it's really taking a toll yeah yeah i saw um I think, I think, and I know this is like on the complete other spectrum of music, but I think Garth Brooks and like his uh, wife did like a, did like a online concert and like those they're, I mean, just like, all like, like unrelated from this, they're just like, cr like, cr like insane people as it is apparently. But like, um, they did a concert just like, like live streaming. And I think they had like 5 million people tune in and watch it. Like, yeah, it's some crazy shit. But I was also thinking, um, cause like you're coming more from, you're coming from a producer's uh, point of view. I figure like, I think you said this, like when we were in class at one point, you were like being stuck inside. You were like, it's a producer's dream. I just get like mad things done. You know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, that's, that's really how it is. And I mean, I'm kind of doing a lot of the same things that I was doing before the quarantine. You know what I mean? Like I've had yeah. great music, uh, make beats. And I'm still working because people have things they need me to work on. So you can send, I've been taking a lot of audio files and doing mixing and mastering remotely. Yeah. Yeah. But as far as just like being inside, like you just, you just have a lot of uh, opportunities and some of the more established artists I work with have recording accessibility where they are. So yeah. A lot of things but like for rappers, like I might make, you know I mean? I'm busting out like at least three beats a day. So like, over yeah, yeah. I probably made, I probably made like 60, 60 plus beats, bro. So like I have all these artists and I'm sending them beats yeah, over it and sending it back to me. So, I mean, since quarantine, bro, I probably like done probably seven or eight songs from top. Yeah. 
without leaving my room. Has like has them sending vocals back to you like affected the quality of the music at all? Like, have you gotten like good vocals and like some like like how like how like because I would wonder like compared to like having everybody in one studio where you can like record everything like you know get it tracked mix it whatever like having somebody send it to you like has it like affected the quality of like the stuff at all have you noticed that i mean like definitely if i'm recording vocals like if i'm the one actually recording them i think yeah better just because when i do it i have a lot of nice equipment you know what i mean i have a really nice microphone a nice preamp yeah yeah like the environment like the booth yeah um, but the things you can do on a computer are like absolutely incredible. I mean, I probably have thousands of dollars worth of editing equipment on my computer. So like yeah, some, yeah. Some, one of this, this one kid sent me some vocals the other day that were, that were trash. I mean, like they, they were recorded like really bad, but yeah. Like they, he was holding, he was holding his phone up to like his mouth, like, like that bad. No, nah, it wasn't like a voice memo. Like he did it in a microphone at a studio, but the engineer just messed up a lot of things. Like while he was doing it, like he yeah, was kind yeah, of off center from the microphone. So like some of the vocals were like coming in one ear like that. Just very. Yeah. Simple. I mean, if you like really sit down and put the time into it, it's like you can fix that. Yeah, you know? for real. And it's little. It's like easy things to fix. Like why, if a mic is here and you're trying to record like a good song, why the fuck? Like you don't have to be a genius to know that you shouldn't be, like over here. You know, hey man, just aren't always like yeah. focused on things like that. You know what I'm saying? When they're in the yeah, studio, yeah. they're in a vibe and it's like, the reason I like being there is because I'm super vocal where it's like, I'll be, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're, you need to stand closer to the mic or like, you need to redo this again. Like that's how yeah. I, so I never sugarcoat anything. Like, cause I'm yeah, yeah. down. So like, yeah. And not, at the end, end of the day, when they hear their shit and it sounds good, they're going to be happy that they, that they for just, you know, listening and paying attention. They don't, know, they don't know how I did it, bro. All they know is when they come to a certain person, this is what the product looks like. They don't care how I do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I put my foot down, things like that. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, though, like, um, since, uh, like, since quarantine's been going on, you said you've just been, like, people have been sending you beats, sending you back stuff. Like, um, what do you think are the, uh, what do you think are the plans for, like, um, maybe seeing like seeing any shows in the future because like obviously it's going to be like a little bit and like people still are trying to make make money and you know that's a huge way a lot of like up-and-coming artists are like making their money to put it back into their music 100 percent, man the live sector is by far the most profitable aspect of the music industry and you know i've seen it personally bro we booked this rapper uh 22 g's for a show he's a uh, He's an upcoming rapper. He's he's got a lot of buzz coming out. He's in he's with like Kodak and all them. Yeah, yeah. And, um, we booked him for a show at Voltage Lounge, which is four hundred and twenty five people. Yeah. Before before we had to postpone the show, I mean, we had sold like two hundred fifty tickets. And they were selling off the selling off the shit real fast. And yeah, yeah. He just had to postpone it. You know what I mean? As far as like, there's nothing you can do about that right now. Yeah, like, yeah, for yeah. real bad for the people who are in festivals because people like me who are doing like five you know what i mean who are keeping the shows at the maximum maximum like a thousand people yeah yeah so you're probably, not yeah we'll probably be able to do stuff in the next like four or five months but festivals bro they're probably canceled for a year like rolling loud like maybe. yeah like all the all the edm festivals and shit like ultra oh, yeah. all that stuff there's like a million people at those like literally it's absolutely insane it's yeah social distancing yeah i wonder dude i feel like something like this could bring about a new woodstock like in the next like coming years where they're saying they're saying like no you can't do this and then maybe there's like this like huge resistance and then like this like maybe somebody invests in like this this huge like uh event and like all these like big artists just come in you know what i'm saying like i almost hope not just because like woodstock was like all right they were protesting like police and like you know what i'm saying yeah it's, but it's like you you want to protest like a disease that going out yeah or that we're trying to like trying our best to make better it's just like that's bro. true because like the people back the hippies back in the late 60s were like fighting actual like social injustices and we're just like yeah. we want to we're just we're just pissed because we have to stay inside yeah like it's so yeah. hard for me like staying inside sucks by me at the end of the day it's like we're sitting inside eating and watching netflix and working remotely you know what i'm saying yeah it's, we're doing school um, remotely yeah we're still civilized like i i you know i and i wouldn't want to like if all the artists literally agreed to that that would be so fucked like i, I would yeah 
I don't think I don't think people really would. I was just thinking like maybe like after like years if people were like, all right, like we're trying to like we're really trying to like get outside and see some shit, you know? Because you know there's gonna be people like this, like especially people from like this air er- this area. You know there's gonna be people this summer go- trying to go to like the BB and T Center, be like, come on, like fucking, like like you know like like the- that place is nasty as it is. I worked there for like two years, um, and like concerts are concerts are some of the nastiest fucking things you could ever oh, leave. Crazy there too. Yeah. What's the cap there? It's, you can hold you can hold like five thousand, eight thousand people there, right? I mean, including including lawn, like uh, thirty thousand. 25, 30,000 people. You can hold that many people there. Yeah, the inside. So there's an in. So there's an inner portion, and it's like a it's like a semicircle, and that holds maybe like you said, like maybe like five thousand, maybe even like three thousand. But the lawn is like huge, and like you could fit like I like when they have the big shows because we had a schedule that would show us like the estimated attendance, and mm-hmm. some of them were like twenty five thousand, thirty thousand, stuff like that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, for real. There's a lot of possibilities for artists when you can hold that many seats. There's like, there's probably the only other place in Philly that could hold that many people would probably be Wells Fargo. Yeah, for real. And like, this is just like right over the right over the bridge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's it's only open in the summer months. Like, it's only open from like May to October. But yeah, and, no one want to go sit on the lawn in December. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, for real. But um, yeah, like um, it's just like. That that place, like, just thinking about concerts and, like, getting a huge crowd together, it's, like, that without coronavirus is one of the nastiest things I've ever fucking seen. And, like, just to make it, all right, now everybody could potentially be, like, really sick and you're in a huge crowd. Like, they're not going to do that for at least, like, another year. You also have to remember, bro, it's a bunch of kids who are going, like, it, well, it obviously, yeah. depends on the artist, but I mean, like, let's say you're booking, like, someone who's popping right like a travis scott type thing where it's like festival vibes like lit yeah like kids are going crazy you know i mean they're sharing drinks they're smoking together yeah yeah within each other's faces and like hey it's the same thing in spring break bro like uh, all the kids were like flying all over the place like partying like not giving a shit and it's yeah like the same mentality where it's just like oh i'm at the concert now like i'm only worried about the concert yeah for real and like um it's like while I kind of envy that because it's like they're just like in the present, just not thinking about it. It's like also they're, they're, um, they're what they're doing is affecting other people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the that's the thing, bro. It's like people aren't self aware of like yeah their actions are affecting other people. They're just kind of like oh well, I'll I'll probably be good. Where it's like that's there's a bigger picture. Yeah, yeah, for real, for real. I'm trying to think, dude. Sometimes like sometimes I'll like try to hold like the next the next thing I'm gonna like talk about like in my head. And sometimes it just like fucking flies out. <laughs> but um, yeah, dude, um, I'm trying to think like that because I'm trying to think with a uh, BB and T. Like when I when I was working there, the worst shows that I always saw were the country shows. Like the rap shows would have like some like like they would they would have some uh, fucking you know like trash and shit. Like it would be cool because I I found more weed at like the rap shows, but mm-hmm. like but like the country shows were like just just. Yeah. just disgusting a million there was always beer cans but like a million beer cans like crushed up beer glass like i've like people like country shows i don't know if you know this when they tailgate they use um fucking like home depot uh buckets or like lowe's buckets and they put toilet seats on them and they shit in them like they fucking they they just like they just they just like they just fucking rip in them and like like it's nothing like 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 around other people like and then they just leave them there so like we would have to fucking clean them up at, at, oh my at, god at my i know bro at my fucking <laughs> at my fucking summer job sometimes there'd be like like just a shit like on the ground like in the parking lot and like we didn't have to touch it but it's just still fucking disgusting you know what i'm saying like a human shit and there's just like a pe- there's just like a like a roll of toilet paper it was like zach brown band or something you know like you know like, the thing, i think this is interesting because about country artists because it's like and it's kind of, which is well, I'll kind of explain. I'll get back into how it relates. But like with country, yeah. it's like people are going to those concerts, like not even to see the artists. Like there's people who I know who've gone yeah. to shows and they're just like, bro, I don't even know who's playing. But it's like we go to the tailgate and we go to the concert and it's like it's a fun experience the whole time. And the artist is profiting off of that environment. But yeah, it vice versa, if you take a genre like rap, bro, where it's like, nobody's going there unless you know somebody who is yeah. going to be there. Cause like, I don't want to see a rapper who I don't know. 
Yeah, for real. I'd love to see a country artist just because, like, you know what I mean? That's the environment. But it's like if you just yeah. have no name rappers at a venue, even if the venue's lit, people are going to be like, I don't want to see him perform. Like, he'll get booed off the stage and shit. Like, they're nasty at those shows. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, I could imagine that shit. Like, if there were people there that didn't know. Because, like, when somebody goes to see a rap concert, or, like, I kind of I, – I mean – Rock is a little different because like white like like what like uh like rock white people are just kind of like oh let's give them a fucking chance but like but like rap concerts are like if they don't if they don't fuck with you they don't fuck with you yeah and, like, like bro like they will get booed off stage yeah like, it don't matter if you paid to be there like none none of that yeah yeah for real and like um the opposite with country shows is that you know like like you said they they profit off of that whole environment but it's like it's like summer outside it's fucking hot everybody's like oh let's just drink beer and like kind of hear this music in the background and just mm-hmm. get like really just get really fucked up you know i mean i know bro like people aren't even watching the show like they're just kind of like there yeah yeah dude and, and like i honestly it makes me feel bad for the people who are actually fans of of the music you know what I mean? Because I'm sure they got some like legit fans. It's like it's like a like a couple in like their 40s or whatever. They show up and it's just like a bunch of 15 year old kids like throwing up on each other and shit. You mm-hmm. know? And they're just like, oh, what yeah, is yeah. this? I'd, I'd get mad too. Yeah, for real. And the other thing that's kind of interesting too is just like obviously it depends on the artist you book, but like yeah, yeah. a lot of rappers, bro, are coming into venues and they're not necessarily performing like doing the classic performance they're more of like an mc where it's yeah. like you come on stage with a dj and it's lit you're listening to their music but they're not really like rapping rapping their music they're kind of just like jumping around at the dj like with a little light showing some smoke where it's just kind of like they're more entertaining and i feel like yeah. the reason they can do that is because people know who they are like yeah yeah they're jumping around getting lit to like just to background music people would be like what is this but what is this shit yeah if drake did it it's yeah like, that's drake he's on stage like we got to go crazy whereas opposed to a band it's like they're actually giving a performance where it's like yeah I yeah could watch a band and i could know nothing about the band but if they're nasty and they're killing it on stage i'm yeah I'm captivated i'm gonna be like damn yeah you're into it yeah you know, I mean, they're performing in a more traditional sense. True, true. Rap is kind of like that, where like if people know you and they fuck with your song, it's like they're just gonna play the song in the background, so everybody's gonna get lit no matter what. Whether you sing or not is like whether you sing your lyrics or not is kind kind of up to you. And like you said, it's like it's not totally, and like I don't think it should be totally looked down upon to like to like because I, I guess some people don't like that when people when rappers don't sing, but like if they're like hyping the crowd up and just having a good time. And like, and they fuck with them. It's like, why should, they should be able to do whatever they want, you know? It's, it's their charisma, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they're all, when I ha- when I bring a rapper somewhere, yeah, a specific type. Like I did this. We booked a rapper named Jay Critch for a show. Yeah, there. I know. I know who that is. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we did a show with him at the Living Arts Theater. We probably had about 600, 650 people there. Yeah. I mean, like he didn't even do a sound check, bro. You know what I'm saying? He came out on stage and he did his thing to his song. And when I book a rapper like that, I'm thinking of them almost more as like an entertainer for the night. Like the same yeah. way you hire like a magician. Or like- and it brings in, it brings in tickets. It brings people in. Cause like if they, if, there, if he actually has like a good fan base, cause like, let's be honest, I'm sure there's 99% of artists don't, you know? And like, there's a certain percentage that do. If you get someone who has a good fan base, you bring them in and like they sell, they sell seats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, you know it's kind of interesting though because it goes back into it where it's like the this makes the production side of their career so much more important because it's like yeah if you don't have that quality coming out of the studio then now your live shows aren't even going to be good because it's like True. your your live shows are basically the studio recordings of what yeah you're, that's why so much emphasis and this is kind of a this would even be a bold statement to say that some artists put more money than they're making into their music off of their music yeah they'll make the money back in other aspects because the quality of the music is so high like they can make yeah back in people buying tickets to their tour because they like their album or sponsorships or yeah i know music. i know what you mean yeah and like i've never heard a rap song go viral that was like had shitty quality you know no song i mean no song really will but like especially like especially rap where like people are making beats and like going over them it's like so they the sound so oversaturated bro that it's just yeah like, you have that quality level to even be considered to be a good song 
Yeah, and even then, people might never find it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The percent, the business aspect is, it's crazy because, like, the, the quality aspect is important, but the business aspect is just as important. And that's where I think a lot of producers and people who are studio heavy kind of fail in the music industry, where it's like you could make a perfect album in a year and every detail is perfect, but it's like, if you don't put as much effort into marketing it as you did making it, then it's just like, you're just making music. Yeah, for real. You know what I'm saying? You, you, for you, real. You have a goal and a plan when you're, while you're making the music to market. The music. Yeah. You can't hope for that like random blow up. Like you have to like have a gradual, like, like plan to like grow it. Mm-hmm. And even I'm telling you, bro, even the people who seem like they blew up overnight, like that was a well-established plan. Yeah all had its place and was taking place when we didn't even realize it and then boom they blow up and we think like oh what they just blew up like that's crazy but yeah in reality like they were building that momentum back yeah 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 they were like they were um kind of yeah nobody was seeing that going on that was like behind the scenes yeah bro it's hard and I, i'll tell you like last year i put a video on my twitter yeah in a beat and I had no content up. Like, I just made my Instagram. I didn't have any other music content up. It was the first video I put up. Yeah, and yeah. I got, like, a quarter million views on this shit, bro. Like, it blew up. I had, like, 100 followers on Twitter. Like, I have no idea how it happened. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's always it was getting on me, like, yo, make another video, make another video. It was just a beat video, like a beat visual? Yeah, so, like, I took this Aaliyah sample, and I, like, put it in an MPC pad, and I, like, yeah. shut it up and shit yeah yeah remixed it into a beat and like people were digging it on twitter i I was mad dms bro i was selling hella beats like yeah yeah i was just people were asking me for more content and i was like i i literally was just overwhelmed i was like i'm not going to start making videos like this until i have solid content that people can back up because even if you blow up people will remember you for 12 hours um, yeah like you have something else to bring them back to you where it's like you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i blew up and it's like oh this song's fire let me check it oh he has a whole album like he has a yeah, whole yeah yeah let me you know what i mean i'll check it out like things like that then yeah yeah you're not gonna get fans you're just gonna get views yeah i know what you mean yeah yo i was wondering um like so bring me back to like when you first got into it like how did you how did you first start to get how did you get into making beats how did you get into like just like music in general like like where did that all start for you um i definitely always had like an interest in music i remember my earliest thing with music was i was watching drake and josh yeah yeah when he played the guitar yeah yeah uh, play the guitar and he was cool and like he got all the girls and shit and i was like oh where oh are shit you? yeah kind of cool so i started playing drums now okay I play drums to this day i've been playing drums for almost 12 years now i was nice like, i was probably 10 when i started nice that's kind of i mean this is a weird coincidence but i actually started playing drums when i was like nine or ten that was like my first instrument yeah but I, it's, yeah it's definitely like a good like first one yeah, for real. And I, 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 I'm mad because like, I never really got to stick with it. Cause like after like two years we moved and like, I think the drums got put in storage and the storage unit got sold. Like mm-hmm. I just, it, it was a tough, it was a tough break, but I got into, I got into guitar like a little while later and like, I've been playing guitar ever since. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's kind of what happened with me. So like I'd start the drums and then as I went to high school, I started playing other instruments yeah i took like lessons and stuff but i'd also do the stuff so i was in like the marching band like jazz band the concert band like i did all yeah that. so that's where i started to like read and write music yeah yeah and then i play in bands and stuff like that but probably my junior year i just started really getting into rap music and i just yeah. got fascinated with like how beats were made and like, so i saved up my money and i bought like the recording software and i literally just like started making beats when i was like 17 or so yeah the point where it was like i was gonna go to school for baseball like i was nasty at baseball in high school like i had like colleges scouting me like i was doing tours and shit damn and I started okay. making beats and like i quit baseball like like that bro like and like i started quitting like dropping out of the music things because i just wanted to produce rappers and i was making beats yeah yeah. i wasn't even gonna go to college like i was just telling my mom like yo i just want to be in the studio i want to make beats 
and then I found out about the music production thing at Rowan. Yeah. Rowan was the only school I applied to. So I said, I'm either going to get into this or I'm not going to college. And I ended up getting in. So I was like, fuck it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then That's I did, awesome. Yeah. And I just did my thing in college. You know what I mean? Now I'm here. Yeah. Do you know, um, do you know anybody named Livy Price? Livy Price? I don't know. No, um, I was thinking because like uh, she's a friend of mine I went to high school with. She was actually also on this podcast. She's a um, she's an artist and producer, and uh, she's in the Rowan the Rowan music uh, music industry uh, oh, program. Where, I think cool. Is she? There's two. There's two brands. So you can get in. There's a business side and then the tech side. You know which one she? Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, I would think I would think the tech one, but I honestly have no idea. Like, but, um, but yeah, I was going to say, um, she was on this podcast and one thing she told me when I was interviewing her is that like, and I think everybody can relate to this. Cause even when I looked back at the shit that I made, I could relate to it. Like when you look back at your old shit, do you like, do you find yourself like cringing? Like, Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. When I started, I literally plug my laptop into a guitar amplifier. Yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't have a preamp. I didn't have speakers, bro. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I just would look up videos on YouTube and watch people make beats. And like, yeah, even bro, I'll listen to things I made two months ago and I'll be like, Oh, I'm so much better now. Like, I can't believe I made that mistake. It's crazy. Cause like, yeah. Yeah. I've been doing this five years now and I'll still, I'll learn something new. Like every time I make a beat. Yeah. Yeah. For real. It's crazy. But yeah, definitely. It's like, it's hard listening to your music over and over again. Just because yeah. like, start to you start to like lose common knowledge you start to just like not be able to tell what sounds good and what doesn't because like you've heard it so many times so a lot of times when i'm doing a song that i really want to slap yeah i'll even just send it around to people and just be like yo what's wrong with this like tell me what's wrong with this song like what could i do better on this song yeah yeah that makes you know, sense I, get like a second opinion yeah man i'm telling you like you always need another set of ears listening to your shit yeah even if it's not like somebody who like makes music but if you just have people like like in your studio or like wherever you are making beats and like they're like if they're bumping to it you can tell that they fuck with it if it's like you know mm -hmm. if, if there's something off about it like you can probably just tell that like people aren't really like vibing with it no yeah bro i don't want to send my music all the time to like somebody who knows everything about it because he'll dissect every little thing when it's just, yeah like, a lot of it is subjective but sometimes yeah. if you send it to someone who's just an advocate, like a fan, and they're rocking with it, they're not going to look at technical aspects. You know what I'm saying? They're going to say, yeah. is it good? Is it a vibe? Or is it not? And like, yeah, yeah. a lot of, especially in hip hop, bro, it's like, sometimes you're doing things that are unorthodox, like doing things yeah. you wouldn't think necessarily sound good. But when you put it all together at first, it does sound good. Yeah, yeah. Because when you're making a beat, bro, it's like, you have to decide when it's finished without the most important aspect, which is the artist. Like I yeah. have to and just be like, Oh yeah, he'll probably be able to rap over this. Like, and just hope for the best. Yeah. 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 I know what you mean. So you kind of have to be able to like tell when something is done without it actually being done, which is like a really hard concept and just like something I've been trying to get better at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel you like, cause I, I, I noticed that even when I was starting to like, just learn how to make beats, like I would go to make something and I'd be like, Oh, that's cool. That that's cool. Like I would think like, Oh, that's perfect. Like that's done. But then I would think to myself, Oh, should I, should I add this? And then it's like, not so much like the things you miss, but like, like, like adding something could like, could yeah. jumble things up. You know what I'm saying? No. Yeah, bro. And it's like, I know like some people, everyone's process is a little different where it's just like, sometimes for me, the hottest like rap, like hip hop radio beats that I make, I'm making that shit in 15 minutes, bro. Because yeah. I'll just hit it on the head. Like, I'll hit a bullseye, like, right there. And, like, <clears throat> you'll almost, like, not want to do too much to it because, like, you like just the way it is. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But other times, bro, if I'm producing somebody, like, I'll go all out. I'll have 70-plus tracks on my shit with an orchestra and all this shit. And I'll bring in a guitarist and I'll bring in a drum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it depends. You know what I'm saying? It all depends on what you're trying to do. So, like, do you produce uh, mainly, like, all, all like, um, rappers? Or do you have, like, other people coming in, like, other genres, like, in your studio? I do. I do other genres. Um, <clears throat> it depends on where I want to take them. Like, if I'm doing a band, 
Yeah, yeah. You don't have to go to a, a studio, like an, uh, I don't want to say an actual studio, but a studio that's more equipped for things like that. Because like if I'm yeah. drums, bro, I'm using at least eight microphones at once. And True. I go home and you know what I'm saying? Bringing your drums somewhere is like a hassle. So like, yeah, yeah. I'll, I've done stuff like that before. Like, and I've done live recordings and stuff, but I wouldn't say the most business I get is from rappers, but it's definitely from vocalists. Yeah, like, yeah. Vocalists because <clears throat> vocals are definitely the easiest thing to record in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah. When you get into like the modern types of vocals that are like super affected, it's just like you want them as dry as you can get. So it's like if you have a booth and a microphone, you're set. It's all about like the effects you put on it where it's like you can do that most of the most of the clientele and like people in our demographic are people who are doing that yeah yeah you know, for I think it's way cheaper bro if you want to record a band i mean it's going to be like 70 80 an hour to book out that studio use all that equipment but it's like for vocals bro like i usually charge anywhere between 20 and 30 an hour freelance yeah yeah that's cool yeah. I, I was thinking about because um i used to do back when i was just like making messing around and making shit because i've always kind of been into music and just like uh, like i'm not a super techie but like audio and like like tech shit like that so like i'm kind of like just into that and like i would um i would record shit in my closet and like i i don't even i i'm thinking about getting some actual like um like a uh, soundproof stuff like mm -hmm. for it but like i would just put like a bunch of clothes blankets around have the mic set up you know what i'm saying like in a good spot and it was usually pretty just like dry and like and like came out came out pretty decent like like so like yeah like you said like recording vocals is usually like kind of like the easier aspect of it but people definitely find ways to fuck it up as you know 100 percent, you know it's yeah. like <laughs> recording vocals is one of those things where it's just like in my mind once it's one of those things where it's like once you know how to do it you just know how to do it like it's yeah. not there's some secret sauce you're missing or like some secret aspect to get your vocals amazing. Like you just know how to do it or you don't. But that being said, that doesn't mean knowing how to do it is easy. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a lot of like yeah, yeah. little, little things that you need to do to make sure that your recording comes out clean. And yeah, like yeah. About being able to record your own vocals like that is I probably have like six or seven consistent artists that record can record for free you know what i'm saying they have whatever setup they have maybe they just have it in their house or like they have it worked out with a studio or an engineer where it's just like they can get their recordings there for free yeah yeah and they send it to me to edit it so like they could record 40 songs in the course of a month bro but like they might pick five of those songs and they're like these are the ones that like these are the keepers these are the only ones that i'm going to use and they can send that to me and then all in all they just saved hundreds of dollars on yeah 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 <coughs> yeah nice but um let me think i was thinking i was thinking we could wrap like in a little bit but um one thing i did want you to bring up is uh your uh your independent label like your record label i figured if you just want to like talk about that just like like tell people like what you what you guys do and like you know the the services you guys provide yeah no problem um i have a i'm a co-founder of an independent record label based in new jersey we're called ykg um it's me and my friend mike who i actually met at rowan he was a pr major oh and, nice yeah before we started the business we were just boys you know what i'm saying he was yeah just chilling we feel like we'd always just chill and stuff and he would always be around when i was making beats yeah yeah and he'd be like he every time he'd see me he'd be like bro these are fire like these are fucking nasty like you're nasty and i was always just kind of like oh word like it's kind of just what i did yeah you know yeah I, I, didn't, I never liked to like gas myself up yeah so yeah. one day he was just one day he was just kind of like yo bro like i'll bet you i can sell these and i was like fuck it like go for it like try and sell them and this man just starts selling mad beats for me like non-exclusive leases so the nice yeah yeah exclusive lease is you can sell it as many times as you want so like I gave him like 15 like just staple beats that I made that people always said they fucked with. Yeah, yeah. So like yo, you can literally sell these as many times as you want to as many different people. Yeah, so people like hear them everywhere and just kind of <coughs> buy, buy them from all over. Exactly, and word of mouth, bro. I mean, he was bringing me in like a couple hundred dollars a month. Damn, yeah. My beats and like obviously I would give him like a 15% cut. You know what I'm saying? Like a manager's cut. 
Yeah, yeah. Finally, like, it just got to the point where people were asking us for mad stuff off of the beats. Like, people were like, yo, bro, do you know where I can record? Like, do you know where I can get mixing? Do you know where I can get a manager, a music video, promotion, like, a show? Yeah. Just like, yo, why don't we, like, offer that? You know what I'm saying? If we have the beats, why don't we offer that? Yeah, because they're asking, like, where where can we get that? You're like, shit, we can provide that. Yeah. Exactly, bro. So, I mean, we talked to a couple people. You know what I mean? We hired, like, some photographers, some videographers and just started taking on some artists and stuff like that and it all just came together like we got a studio spot <clears throat> that spot became booming enough that we opened another spot we hired engineers and stuff like that yeah yeah we started getting into other aspects and those revenues kind of led to other things so someone would come into the studio and be like yo i need two hours of time and they'd be like, word yo do you know who where i can get a music video yeah yeah our, our, our company's music guy can do it so we just started doing all that and that led to the live shows and that just blew things up because it's like yeah yeah booking artists that people knew like we you know i mean we did the jay crit show we did an nle choppa show oh yeah yeah i remember that i remember uh, i remember people at rowing giving out like flyers for that yeah those were those were all the people like we hired them to like give out flyers and shit and then we're doing the the sniper gang show which is cool with a bunch of showcases in between and that just like put our name out there to so many people bro so now we kind of have like a name in philly yeah yeah and like just it all came the the voltage lounge right isn't that where you guys do like most of them yeah so we did um we're doing the 22 g's show at voltage lounge the jay critch was at the living arts theater oh tla yeah yeah the tla and yeah there's actually another place by the tla it's called the tlo tlo oh shit it's, it's weird. It's not like we actually booked NLE Chapa at the cathedral in Philly. I don't know if you know where that is. Uh, I'm trying to think like it's center city. It's a dope ass venue. And the day yeah. before the show, they had a gas leak. So we moved oh. to the TLO row. We had yeah. we sold 500 plus tickets to the show. And la- the day before we had to tell all of them, yo, know, it's down the street. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we did it there, which was, probably it's not even a venue it's just like a dance hall but i mean we packed that bitch out yeah 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 for real i'm, I'm getting a little off topic but no yeah, you're good that's kind of how uh it all started is just bringing different aspects of the industry all into one place and just being like a name like a staple name that people can remember like ykg yeah but yeah kind of more recently we've kind of been doing into doing uh production record deals with artists okay where it's like they'll come in and we'll either like record them and make them a discounter for free. And in return, we're getting good enough at promoting people that we're making the money back in streaming royalties. Okay. Yeah. Saying like, for example, we have this one artist, Seti Sosa, we've been working with. I, I, I remember seeing him on like, cause I was just like scroll. I remember at one point I was scrolling through just like the, like the Instagram or something. And like, I found his, I found his thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, He's interesting. He's a kind of like an experimental rap artist. Yeah, yeah. And getting really into doing like paid promotion. So it's like, you know, I mean, putting our music on playlists, like doing blog posts, things like that. Yeah, yeah. We'll come up with budgets for artists. You know what I'm saying? We'll we're, we'll say like, all right, we'll give you this much of a discount on the services. And in return, we get this much percentage of the royalties and we're putting this money into the music yeah you know, yeah get it back in promotion like for example we playlisted his song on a couple hot philly playlists where we know the curators yeah we yeah paid about a hundred dollars all in all together to get his music on the playlist you know what i mean because that's how the curators make money yeah they yeah followers they have the people listening to their things yeah well, you know what i mean but in retrospect we we got like almost six almost six figure streams on the song you know what i'm saying yeah About yeah thousand streams so we'll get that hundred dollars back and then more yeah so yeah only did we make money off of the song but when you look at the song it has hella streams so it's like both of that all of that just is good energy good looks for our label it's like if i put that up people want to work with me because i'm producing music whether or not i wrote it or not i'm producing music that yeah numbers and obviously people everyone wants more numbers you know what i mean 
Yeah, yeah, and it's like once people see that, like you get a little bit of numbers, it's like you get a little more, and then once people see, like, say you hit, I don't know, like a hundred thousand, they'll be like, all right, I guess he's kind of popping, and then like it just keeps moving, it just keeps, it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just keeps going, bro. And I'm telling you, it's crazy how much like how much people value that, like the plays aspect, because again, like going back to it, if you go on an artist's Instagram, bro, all you're gonna, you only know about the artist from what you can see online so it's like yeah this artist can't be big on instagram or big on whatever and like people like people are talking about him you go on his music and he has barely any streams yeah yeah like you have to back that image up so it's like when we do that that kind of like reinforces our image as a label where it's like artists we work with whether or not we did it directly but artists we work with are popping off and that yeah yeah us, and then people relate our label with the success of the artist yeah for real because like you're like part of the, like like for them to be like popping off and then like um somebody see like all the big labels they've worked with but then like see like um you know like independent labels like like yours and like other ones that are you know like coming up and doing well but not like the huge major labels it kind of puts you guys on the same playing field where you're like hey we can do this shit too you know what I'm saying? Like we're we're right here to do the same shit, and then other people will like start like flocking towards you guys. Not only that, bro, but it's like YKG. It's like although we probably have close to ten employees now. Yeah. Me and my friend Mike, Mike Young, like we're mm. the doing it, and those business connections almost inadvertently become personal connections. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. I, when Jay Critch came out on stage to the show, I got a crazy video of him on my phone. Like yeah, I'm, yeah motherfucker like coming out on stage i'm walking him out like i'm handing him his microphone and stuff yeah yeah on my instagram bro and it's like i swear every time we have a show now like i i have so many artists hitting me up to perform that it's just like it's just money i can make like if i can yeah. sell slots at these big shows for like bro the nle show i was selling an opener slot for 500 dollars yeah yeah nine slots oh so the so the so you're telling me that the artist is paying you to like per, to get exposure and like open up for him hell yeah bro i mean yeah. if this big artist is performing and his crowd is guaranteed to be there like you're you know i mean i have something that you want like you want to open up yeah you you want to perform you want to be discovered yeah and that's clout for you, bro. You can say, you don't have to tell people you're paying to open up. You can, yo, all, like, you know what I'm saying? If you just hear, oh, this kid's opening up for YBN Corday, like, <clears throat> you're not going to, you're not going to think what's going on in the background. You're going to be like, damn, he must be on, bro. He's opening up for YBN Corday. Like, yeah, yeah. Crazy. And, and it's like, yeah, the, I'm telling you, bro, like, I can't wait till the live sector's opening back up. That shit literally paying my pills. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I'm thinking because like I know like some people from like my area because I live in Blackwood, and mm -hmm. I know I know some people from my area that I've seen do like like shows at like the Voltage Lounge, but it was on like like it was on like a Tuesday and it was like not that you know what I mean like it was kind of like a smaller like like thing you know. Well, hey man, I'm, I'm telling you, it's like I can't even. I'm not even gonna say that like I'm the master and I know how to do a lot of this. Uh, my business partner is really getting it. Yeah, yeah. I'm holding concerts, man. And yeah art form like within itself like the idea of promoting a concert like everything every single thing has to do with how that concert's going to turn out like where yeah, yeah. is there parking what day is it on how many people are going to be there what's the weather like you know what i'm saying all these things come into play yeah yeah just like it's hard to get people at a show you know what i'm saying and just get yeah people to even know there's a show going on yeah for real and like to actually i mean think about it at the end of the day you guys have to like wrangle like 200 500 thousand whatever people like like and, like not like and like convince them like they like they want to come see this thing and at the same time it's like they have to figure out where and you know all, all this and then so like take me to this moment like you get everybody in there uh like the show hasn't started yet everybody's just kind of walking around waiting the crowd isn't like warmed up or anything do y'all just like go straight into having rappers come out or do you have somebody come out like a dj or something like how, how do you guys like transition into like into really getting the show like popping off that's a good question um kind of depends on the show you know what i mean it depends on the crowd like sometimes i i mean every time i say doors open at eight like i'm not expecting people to start showing up till eight thirty nine. Yeah, yeah. Always late. That's a, that's one thing. But like, 
it depends like if people are there and they're kind of staying around like we'll kind of like bring the rappers out but usually we have a pretty detailed like uh stage plot that kind yeah of, yeah like, this is the time that this rapper is going on like this is when this is going on and then it's all like warming up for the main act you know what i'm saying but yeah I'll, yeah what do you want to do bro like i'm telling you yo i'm about to tell you about this bro this this is the saddest thing ever this was the biggest l i ever took in the music industry yeah yeah okay so my boy got approved he's on the park and rex board okay swedes bro so he got approved to do a festival this summer at swedes bro we can have 3500 people there so i have a very old connection to one of juice world djs mm -hmm. so i hit him up and i said can you put me in contact with his booking manager he did and he was setting up the prices and they gave me a realistic price to book him so we were in the process of like booking him like i advanced the date i sent out all the technical writers and i even got like it took us about a month but we got the it was like twenty thousand dollars sponsorship money to put the deposit down for his show yeah yeah and it was probably like a week before i was expecting the final revisions of his draft like i sent them the contract for the show and they were going to send me the revisions back. I was going to make them sign it and then send them the money. And then, you know what I mean? The show was on. The show was set. And probably yeah. before I was supposed to get the contracts back to sign again, he overdosed. Yeah. I, I, yeah, man. Crazy because, like, we could have gotten another act. But the price that I was getting on him, like, all in all, it was probably going to be about 60 bands, $60,000 to bring yeah. And he's like one of the biggest. He's like he's like one of the biggest bro, we like, so big guys out. in the world. I yeah. did math, bro. We would have came out with over one hundred and forty thousand dollars, like just off of tickets. Yeah, and it just all like a, a month of planning and like six months of future planning just gone right before my eyes. And bro, I was mad. I was mad as hell. That would have literally paid my college debt. Yeah, like, one show, bro, and like. It just taught me a lesson. It was kind of like, you know what I mean? You got to just shake it off and like move on to the next opportunity. Yeah, for real. Nothing I can do about that, bro. Like there's nothing I can do about that. I did everything right and still something happens. So yeah. you have to always be ready to adapt. Yeah, man. And like think of, think of it in a positive, positive light. A, I mean, obviously it's not positive. Like, you know, he, he passed away. But mm -hmm. like like um, you have an interesting story to tell. B, um, like I feel like, and this is, I feel like this is with everybody, like, it's like even when you just think you're about to have like your big break, like it's not always like it's you know like you, like you have to just like keep grinding and like and like get to your time. You know what I'm saying? It's like as long that's even how I feel with this podcast because this podcast is brand new. It's forty. This is episode forty three, mm -hmm. so like it's still relatively brand new. But I figure if you do a thousand of anything, like somebody's bound to latch on. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, man. Like you can't you can't buy or you can't like get past the experience of everything you know what i'm saying like yeah so yeah kind of try not to take anything too serious like i can't tell you how many times i've had someone come up into my face with some crazy opportunity and yeah so, you know what i mean you gotta just stay level-headed and be like you can't expect to get there overnight you know what i'm saying like the reason yeah. anytime i've done something that has been notable within the industry i've always had somebody that like kind of connected me there that i knew was legit like yeah i keep bringing him up but jay critch for example like i knew somebody who knew his booking agent yeah so yeah out to them like they're my boy vouched for me and he was like yo he's he he can actually you know what i'm saying like yeah he's, yeah it's like he they they know what they're doing they'll be able to actually put on a good event and things like that like you can't just trust somebody coming out like of nowhere and being like yo bro like i, I worked with drake like i'm yeah you know what i'm saying Pete, you have to be credible like you have yeah to you need credibility and even if that credibility is one guy <laughs> that somebody knows it's like that's enough to be like you know like let's let's even if even if that's enough to just be like all right like we'll try it out and then it goes well and that's how you get your foot in the door you know what i'm saying you need the people word mouth industry bro like it's yeah crazy and it's it's deceiving because it's like with technology and social media people base so many people's opinions just off of that Whereas yeah like yeah people who have you know what i mean like hundreds of thousands of followers who would kill to be in the spot of somebody professionally who has eleven thousand followers ten thousand followers because it's like 
their whole image is based on their social media. It's one DJ. Yeah. Who, almost a hundred thousand followers get thousands of views on Instagram. Yeah. Then his account got blocked because he was like wiling on Instagram and his career just down the Vanished. street after that yeah. whole thing was based on the Instagram and image. Like he didn't have any substance behind it. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. I wanted to ask you a question about that. Actually. I know you said that like, um, if you have the followers, you got to have the plays to back it up. Are there a lot of people, do you find a lot of people in the industry today or just like, like people that just kind of like come around that are maybe like new to it or coming up? Like, do you see people trying to buy their shit, like buy their followers, buy their, yeah. All all the time, every day, hundred percent. And is it like, is it, is it like a legitimate, can it be a legitimate investment or do you think it's like, do you think that's completely out of the question? Like people's, people's fan bases come from them just like, right. Just like, you know, making music and like getting popular. Well, once doing bots is against, like, technically it's against the streaming policy. You know what I'm saying? Like getting, yeah, yeah. When you sign up, technically you're breaking the code. So like, okay. not, like I'm a boy scout or anything like that, but technically they have yeah. the right to take those streams away, which in my opinion means that you're in the wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Personal note, I think it's a little fake. Like you're faking. Yeah, for real. If you're buying your followers which is like I understand it it's a good it's a good image but it's like at the end of the day somebody who has a distinct eye like I could look at somebody's Instagram and tell like if they're yeah. real or if they're fakes not No a- really though like you like you open the shit up and it's like 80,000 followers or some shit but then you look at their posts and it's like I don't know it might have like 100 something likes and then you go in the followers and they're all like these names in like a, in like a, a language you've never fucking seen before and shit you know and there's also like you gotta be careful about how people word things when they say you know what i'm saying like what they have like yeah I knew this one rapper who was like um he dropped like a 20 song album bro yeah and yeah got, like fifty thousand streams on it when in retrospect all right you probably got a couple thousand streams on each song you know what i mean but the way he advertised it is like that he had one song that got fifty thousand streams yeah, it's yeah. A very small example of it, but like th- that's the type of thing that people will do. You know what I mean? Or another yeah. cool example is like an artist, if they're opening up for a headliner and you didn't know me, I might come out on stage jumping around to a song that everybody knows, like The Box by Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. yeah. And then when my videographer edits it, he'll mute it and then put in one of my songs so it looks like everyone was getting lit to my song. Damn, that's weird as hell, bro. It broke me. It's a, it's, that's honestly not a bad tactic, but that's just like, that's seedy as fuck. Bro, that's, that's really how it is. And the thing is that it's just like, yeah, that might get you a cool image. But yeah. people are always going to recognize real, bro. Like, I don't care how popular yeah, yeah. Instagram, like, the you see somebody who's actually doing it, they're going to see right through you. They're going to be like, he's corny, he's fake, like, he's just stunned. Where it's like... yeah think about who your goal is to impress people like when i drop music my goal is to impress somebody who's actually doing this shit yeah like, yeah wow, that's that's high quality that's good like, i don't care what like people's friends think i don't care what like girls think i don't care what like somebody's dad thinks like yeah yeah I'm impressed. like my target demographic is people who are going to boost me up you know yeah, that? true. And I feel like the dudes, the dudes who like either buy the bots or they like do shit like that, like if they can build like a little bit of clout off of that, I feel like that's all it is. It's just clout. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit fades. Like, but if you're like, if you're serious about it and you're like really, you know, making, you're making shit, you're making music and like, you know, producing high quality shit and putting in the time, like that shit will stay. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's mm-hmm. not going to go anywhere and you can keep doing it. Whereas people like, that's why like, I mean, I don't know how it is in the studio. I'm sure there's some rappers that are like really involved and some rappers where you feel like you have to like move them to the, to the booth and shit. No, but yeah, like, 100%. Yeah. But um, like yeah. the people who, the people who are legit about it and like, and like even, even if they're a good rapper, but they're not crazy into like the other side, but like they're, they're still like being attentive and like working on their lyrics and shit. Like the people who are serious about it are the ones who are going to, you know, like just stick around. Yeah, exactly. Like, I feel like the buying followers and buying all that is just like such a temporary solution. And yeah. I, the reason, one of the main reason people do it is because of just like self confidence, bro. Like, I'm telling you, like, just being a producer, like, you have to realize that it's like 
not only is it a very unforgiving industry, but it's also like, there's no one patting you on the back saying, oh, good job. Like there's, you get almost, you don't get any recognition until everybody recognizes you. You don't have value until yeah. people give you value. So you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, for, for example, me with my Instagram, bro, like my shit isn't even that popping. Like I probably have 1500 followers, but the yeah. content on my Instagram is quality. It's me in studios, like nice pictures, like me with artists that, you know what I'm saying? Local yeah, artists yeah. People around me might have heard of. So it's like people recognize that, but it's like if you're not actually doing things, like and you're doing things wrong and you're really trying and you're putting your all into it like yeah discouraging so you might do something like oh i gotta buy the followers so people you know i'm saying people think i'm popping but yeah yeah it's like it's like putting a band-aid on a gunshot wound you know yeah 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 it's like a flat it seems like you'd be like a flash in the pan like if you if you tried some shit like that because the the way i was thinking of it is that like like if you try to like make people think that you're popping off by like say buying followers or something, can that in turn like make you actually pop like actually like blow up or like it's like you said it's kind of just like it's kind of just like a dangerous road to go down and it's like probably well, though the way it started is what artists would do is when they were on the come like on the come up and yeah, they would yeah. make a big ass move like drop an album or do a tour, they would temporarily temporarily buy more followers more plays more whatever <clears throat> so then as they got more organic growth from the moves they were making they would slowly get rid of those fake followers until it finally evened out so yeah. they, it was all organic they would get rid of the fake but and it, and it never looks like they lost any any exactly it never it just you know what i'm saying it kind of just like they were making real progress, but on Instagram, it doesn't, you wouldn't think they're getting hella followers because they're getting rid of their fake followers and replacing them with organic followers. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people kind of just do it and like, just keep it like that. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. Example, yeah. You have $400. You could probably go buy an account with like 50,000 followers already. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. It's, it's absolutely wild. So it's just like, and all the accounts, like, it's like, I don't even know how they make those accounts because all those accounts have, like, no pictures and, like, two followers, like, you know? Well, yeah, sometimes it will be, like, an old account that actually is organic followers and then some are organic and some fake followers. You know what I'm saying? Every situation is a little different. Yeah, but yeah. I never think it's okay, but I think at least in the past they kind of had a goal with it that was productive, but now it's just kind of like I want to look like I'm popping – yeah not, so i'm gonna buy the followers and it's just like yeah deceiving because a lot of people only know you by your social media for real and dude you know what like would change the game <laughs> honestly because like i feel like it's crazy how much like how much emphasis is around like that number on that instagram page like if everyone could still see the shit it's like imagine if they stopped showing followers you know, you know we're talking about that bro i actually heard some rumors about that that they're gonna take away followers and yeah they didn't take away followers but they're gonna take away likes on pictures because that's another thing people pay for is likes yeah true true so once you take that out of the equation bro it's all about the quality of your content and that's the thing that i stress to artists all the time i'm like bro like it doesn't matter how many views you get, like if you're putting out some absolute garbage, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like you need to have quality content or else, because that's how you naturally gain followers. You know what I'm saying? Like this one artist we work with, his name's Big Bubba. We've been working with him for probably like a year now. And when we started with him, bro, he was probably getting like 80 streams a song. And now he's averaging 15K a song. Yeah, he, yeah. He song popped off at 40K. So it's like, okay, shit. You, you know what I'm saying? He didn't do that by just putting out hella music. He did that by putting out quality music and releasing and marketing it strategically with a plan in mind. You know what I'm saying? One of the biggest things our label offers that a lot of people take advantage of is consultations. With yeah, him. yeah. So like, he charges $30 for a consultation, but I mean, bro, like you'll have shit to do for like three months. Like he literally plans out a three month thing for you to grow. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of artists appreciate that because it's like, they're looking at their career and it, we're not even saying like, you'll buy as many services from us as possible. We're keeping it real with them. You know what I'm saying? We might be like, if you have all this music recorded, like don't spend your money 
in our in our recording studio you know what i'm saying yeah 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 spend some money on and obviously like things we can help with but like spend money on promoting it. yeah yeah well, there but the recognition is or maybe it's the other way around or maybe there's a million other things that are like different but once you can help them like get to where they're going and they see the organic progress they're getting they'll get hype about it because then they'll get real plays and real fans yeah yeah i feel you mm-hmm. i gotta start i honestly have to start promoting this podcast more i mean i do it all myself like i like i, re- I record it i make all the all the visuals like any any type of thumbnail like intros anything like that like mm-hmm. you know put it out like um and like I, I started when I first started doing it, I was making like um like clips and like I was like trimming clips and then putting them like on because that's how a lot of the guy the guys do it like because you might watch a three minute uh clip of say like the Joe Rogan experience or something like that and then you say oh shit that was cool and then it makes you click on another one and then you watch the clips and then soon you're watching the whole show you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying like so like a lot of the like YouTube and Instagram is like a big platform for that but I'm trying to think of like like other ways, like I was even thinking, I, I, I didn't get to do it because uh, Rowan uh, closed down, but like I was trying to make um, like fucking, I was trying to make like stickers. I was trying to make t-shirts and shit. I was going to make a bunch of t-shirts like with that logo and just like leave them like on tables and shit and just like let people grab them. And I figure if somebody wears a t-shirt, it's like not only will they get it, but like a, a bunch of people will see them wearing it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think I think the most important thing on social media is to definitely be like interactive with people. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like give people a say. Yeah. The content that they want to see because then you'll find out exactly what they want to see. Like true, a great true. example of that is um you know what I quarantine radio is? Uh no, nah, I don't. So Tory Lanes actually recently broke the Instagram live record. For half oh shit because he goes on to his instagram live and he has what's called quarantine radio where he's just like the radio host and he's got like sound effects and shit yeah yeah and he'll just add random people onto the live to just like do crazy shit like twerk or like eat something crazy or like just sing and yeah yeah while like famous not every once in a while like all the time people famous people like request to be on it like drake was on it rihanna was on it like chris yeah Brown. yeah so no, it's like that's why i said those three but <laughs> yeah but, uh, those are i mean those are three of the most famous people in the world so like they're popping you know, off you know but getting interactive with them you know what i'm saying and yeah i i it's i i honestly don't know how to market a podcast i only know how to do the music shit bro but yeah yeah way to do you know what I'm saying? You just kind of yeah. like plan it out a little bit. Like that's what I'm doing with Twitter right now. I'm trying. I'm trying to go viral again. Yeah. One for one with the video. I just made another one today, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna post it. Like I'm, my boy's editing it, and I'm gonna post it and see what happens. Yeah, I'm honestly thinking about higher. Like, like, like. I mean, it's. I don't. It's obviously like it's not like a super um like great time to like be spending like extra money. You know, like everybody's um like I like my. I, I was working a decent job, but it was not considered non-essential. So now I'm not working. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. like, I'm probably going to have to get a, another job, but like, I'm honestly thinking about like maybe like hiring somebody to like, just for the long term. Cause ev- eventually I'm going to need an engineer once this like grows, but I'm not expecting that for maybe like another two years, year or two years. But like, um, like as far as just like having someone to really go through all the shows and like, clip up shit that they think is funny and then like redistribute that on like different YouTube and like Instagram accounts and things like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I want to find somebody for that, like just start learning how to like market it more. And it's like, it's weird because like, I mean, like for like, I I mean, at the end of the day, I do this just because like I fuck with it and it's cool to like have interesting conversations with people and like it keeps keeps me um, connected with like old friends and like shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So like, I think I like, at its essence, I always kind of want this podcast to stay at that. But I just feel like if I could like get, I feel like there's plenty of people if I could just find like good clips, like that would, that would fuck with it. Especially, especially now's a great time for content because people are consuming content like crazy. Cause we have nothing, cause we're home, you know, mm-hmm. like people, like people have not, people have nothing, honestly, nothing better to do. So like a lot, a lot of people. So like, it's a great time to like start like focusing on like doing more of that. I just think I got to like, either just like hunker down or like, I know like I, like I'll have like a lot of different shit going on. So like 
I want to try to bring other people into the, into the mix, but you know, that's kind of like a future, future goal. Yeah, no, I mean, I can tell you have an interest in it and you know, a lot of people told me the same thing is it's just like, if you like what you're doing, like what you're doing will like the success will kind of come naturally if you just work hard. Like my yeah, first yeah. video that kind of got me all like a bunch of like online notoriety. I yeah. My Twitter because I thought it was ass and it wasn't good enough for my Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But like that was just a video of me making a beat. I was like, there's nothing special about it. Like, fuck it, I'll put it on my Twitter. And yeah, it blew up. And that kind of showed me that I was like, damn, I must be doing something right if like I didn't even think that video was that hot. Like I didn't think it's anything special and it still did all this. I think the reason it did is because it was natural. Yeah. You know, yeah. It was naturally interesting to watch that. Like I kind of play, I played it out live and I was just like, whatever. I didn't yeah. thought into it. And I think, and you were having fun. I'm assuming. Yeah, right? I, was, I was having a blast, bro. I was, yeah. like, I was like, I was jamming with it, bro. My roommate was recording me. Like I was smoking. Like I was. High. Yeah. Yeah. So That's like, yeah, but I think the same thing is going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Where it's just like that opportunity is going to present itself. To yeah, you. for real. And like, honestly, that's what I love about this. And I mean, like, obviously, like with what I want to do, the hard work honestly comes because like the hard work comes in the writing because like, like, like having to like, like writing shit as hard as it is, but like writing like jokes that like people will think is are funny, like writing stand up and shit is fucking like one of the most frustrating things like like i mean it's I, i'd kind of compare it to like how like when you're making a beat and you just can't figure it out it's like the same way because like you have to like the first person you have to make yourself make laugh is yourself and like if you can't even if you're trying to think on a premise but you can't even make yourself laugh you're like fucking going crazy you know what i'm saying yeah no i can't i can't even imagine what it's like for that I'll, i can just relate it to like production you know what i'm saying where it's yeah just, sometimes i need to step away from it but then at the same that time, that works too. Yeah. Sometimes it's like the less. And I don't mean this too literal, but the less I think about it, almost like the better it comes out. Like, yeah, I'll be like kind of in the vibe. And this that's the best, time, man. It's like if you have the charisma and it's like you execute your jokes the way you can literally say anything. I mean, yeah, for real, and like get people, just get people going off your. <laughs> Dave Chappelle walks on stage and s says profanity. You yeah. Know, it's hilarious just because, like, he delivers it the right way. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. 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 Shit like that. Yeah. And, like, once you get people go, like, because Dave Chappelle is also, like, a fantastic joke writer. But, like, once he gets people going with his jokes, like you said, once you got the crowd on your side, it becomes a lot easier to say something and they just, they'll just laugh out of on principle. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's really, weird. it's a, it's a really weird, like, uh, like medium if you think about it because like those people like especially comedians like they're just like it's like as much as you think like like yeah they're funny but also it's like they're really controlling the room you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like because a lot of the laughs they get is almost kind of like on like once they get their timing down it's almost like the audience feels like feels like they they have a timing too you know yeah. like to laugh yeah, bro and i say I don't, I don't mean this just for you i say this to everyone bro like if you're not utilizing social media to the fullest extent like you're just lacking bro because yeah promotion like if you like you know who i think is hilarious is like twitter accounts like you know what i'm saying like some twitter accounts literally have me crying bro like every day and it's yeah just, i know people who have made careers off music from being funny on twitter you know what i'm saying like i can't imagine that would be any different from somebody in your shoes who was like trying to do comedy where it's like not necessarily twitter you know what i'm saying i don't say like anybody should do something specific but for me yeah those are, are kind of like something I, I get into like i'm good at so i'm utilizing that but maybe for you it's something different but definitely you have to do it have to on yeah because, i definitely you know what i mean it's just everything at this point yeah for real i definitely have to start clipping up more like i like i started i have to start putting more like clips together for people to actually like see the show because like mm -hmm. i feel like i feel like it's like so many people like i like obviously i get people to tune in but like like i feel like people see the the like the story or whatever i put it on and they'll be like oh that's cool but like maybe they don't really feel like clicking on it i feel like if i put something in front of people and then they were like oh shit you know like that's kind of funny that's whatever you know what i mean like and you just gotta get creative with it like have a bunch of trial and error like yeah 
post things like if people are fucking with it then you know i mean go down that route if they're not then find a different one but whatever whatever you do man i i and i i'm lacking too i can't i'm not like a social media influencer or anything you know what i'm saying i just yeah. see it works with artists yeah yeah absolutely insane bro yeah man i'm thinking the one clip that i we actually did post was from like like ep, this is way back like episode like eight i think and we were um i was just with a bunch of because i'm a i'm i'm a i've been playing hockey like for like my whole life so i was playing like a tournament that night with like some buddies that like i had played with and they came over afterwards to do the show and for the last like 45 minutes of the show we just like freestyle rap and like it was goofy it was like 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 it was like it was just like fucking like like corny as fuck at times but also it was just like it was funny you know what i'm saying like it was just it was just a fucking like like it was just a fucking like joke but it, but like i found like i just found like a really like like funny clip from that and i like threw that up there and it actually got like like i don't have any promotion on my instagram i don't have any like like it's just like a right like it's it's a business account but it's just like a regular instagram i have maybe i have like right under like a thousand followers like and it got like I can't remember how many views, but like, I just remember it was like a, like a decent amount of views off of nothing. So I'm thinking if I'm doing nothing with this, if I really tried to push this, people would probably fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly, man. I'm telling you, it's the same way. You have to think of it the same way as like giving a, a performance at like a comedy club or something like that. You have to do yeah. it the right way. You know what I'm saying? Like you kind of have to like just plan it out a little bit. Like I think so, a lot of people try to overthink it when it's kind of just like, if it's funny and if it's personable, it will kind of just like, will kind of just like stick. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for real. Yo, so um, before we wrap up, I wanted to ask you one more question. What is like the most like like what is the worst experience you've ever had in the studio with an artist? Like, take me through take me through that. The worst experience I've ever had, man. Bringing back memories, bro. <laughs> um it, hmm. all right I, I don't know if this is the worst but this is this is definitely one so i was in the studio with this bull named slump that's yeah. that's his art he's a new york drill rapper mm. and he right before he had gotten into the studio probably like a week before he dropped a single that had hit like oh like a million and a half plays like it just blew up yeah him. yeah it was kind of hot shit for a little while yeah yeah was, uh, i think he was messing with like trippy red yeah 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 i got you that but he pulled up to the studio because i know one of his boy i record one of his boys and they came through and he's 16 years old yeah yeah and he, you know he's being mad rude to me bro he's like telling me to do shit he's like it's like yo like go over there like uh go put this on my vocal like fix my microphone and like yeah I, I'm just like programmed to just like not listening, kind of just like you know what I'm saying. You want to get you want to get the work done, like you're trying to get. Want to get the work done. He was paying me, you know what I'm saying. I'm not gonna yeah. like dick him out. And we start recording, and he's like yelling at me. He's like, "You're doing this wrong. Like, <clears throat> this isn't how you do it. Like, you're doing this wrong." And he started like yelling at me and like cursing at me and shit. And finally, yeah. like, get the fuck out. I literally said that. I was like, "Get the fuck out of my studio, like right now." And like yeah. a booth, bro. And I like, I like, he's short and I pulled his shirt and I was kind of like, I threw him out of the booth. I was like, you're not going to talk to me like that, bro. In my studio. And his boy, yeah. was, his boy sized me up and like one of my boys jumped in and shit. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, what do you mean I paid? And I literally took the money out of my pocket. I handed it to him. I was like, I don't give a fuck, bro. Like I was like, get out. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to me like that. He's like, you know, I just dropped this. He was trying to rub his song in my face. And I was like, bro, like, I don't, I won't care if you're, Travis Scott like you're not familiar. yeah dude it doesn't you could be fucking Drake but like if you're gonna be if you're just gonna be fucking rude and I mean he's like I mean so like some people don't change like I mean 16 you could say he's young but like also like, if you're just rude you're fucking rude you like, know he, what I'm saying? Yeah, bro, he came in my house like already like mad at me like like that's how it seemed and I was kind of I thought something was up like I thought something happened before it yeah come, like, you can't you know what I'm saying you gotta respect everybody that you work with no matter how big they are how little they are like everyone's an artist so it's just like especially yeah, for real a million just because you got a million plays bro like that don't you know yeah I'm and saying? also like i've never i've never fucking heard of that bull anyway so it's like you know what i mean like unless you're i mean i guess 
and I'm sure like Drake and people like that, you know, whoever like the, like don't like Travis Scott don't do shit like this. Maybe they do, but like when you get to that level, if like that guy yells at you, you're like, all right, well, oh my, you're like, oh my god, Travis Scott just yelled at me, you know, like you're you're still starstruck, but like you're gonna if it's, do it, bro, you're gonna you're gonna have to just say whatever, like and just put up with it at that level. Yeah, but like if you're just like some fucking like kid and like and you want to come in and be an asshole, it's like, dude, like first of all, you're you're making you're making your music worse because you're fucking like causing you're causing trouble in the studio and you know and se- second of all you're just a fucking dick like you're just rude <laughs> like no uh, yeah man exactly and like it's funny it's funny bring up travis scott because one of my professors actually was uh the engineer for one of his he works at starlight in new york <clears throat> yeah yeah they're doing some backup vocals for Astro World. mm-hmm he was telling me, bro, he came in, was wilding, like, came in with, like, 30 people, was, yeah. like, a mess, like, got mad at him, like, threw some shit at him, like, kicked a speaker, broke it, and he, he was just, like... Who the fuck is this guy, like... Yeah, I mean, he was, like, he was, like, yeah, I get it, it's Travis Scott, but he's, like, all in all, I was the one who was, like, get out. Yeah. Like, I, I told Travis Scott to get out, and I was, like, that's, that's ballsy. I was, like, yeah. I, I would have taken it, like, I would have been, like, okay, Travis yeah yeah for real (laughs) power to him yeah man no don't take shit that's i mean like that's kind of like it like i know i don't know if you've uh seen any of these before but like one of the like running uh themes in this podcast is like don't fucking don't take shit you know what i'm saying don't take shit from from nobody fuck that yeah somebody gets in your face you get right fucking back up in theirs like that's how you gotta be you know what i'm saying gotta stand your ground yeah for real Yo, on that note, I think we'll wrap, but real quick, um, like you did in the beginning, like just promote anything you want, anything you anything you want to plug, now's yeah, the time to do it. Definitely. Uh follow me on Instagram, Eli the Producer, E L I T H A Producer, for all of my personal content artists I work with. And also if you get a chance, follow my labels page, which is ykg.p and that will have information on upcoming shows services we offer if you have any in business inquiries please feel free to dm any of the accounts you'll get in contact with me or my business manager awesome man cool yeah dude thanks for coming on this is this is this was fun a good conversation you know i definitely sorry what'd you say i said thanks so much for having me bro i like talking about this oh yeah of course man and it's just it's like i mean it sucks that we're all stuck inside, but it's actually like, I actually want to shout out zoom just for having a cool fucking like, like this is, this shit's so easy. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, if it wasn't for zoom, our classes would have been down the shitter all day. Yeah. We couldn't have done anything with it. So shout yeah. out. Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fucking shout out zoom. But uh, yo, I wanted to uh, real quick before, before I uh, play our outro, I wanted to say, I'm going to try to have you back on at some point if you want with, um, uh, my friend Livy, uh, aka the Thuxury, that's like her her artist name. But um, I think you guys would ha- would would hit it off and have a good conversation because I mean, you know, you guys are both like producers, like in that in that uh, industry. I think I think I think y'all would have a lot to talk talk about. Definitely, bro. Just again, just let me know. Like, I'd love to come back anytime you're trying to have me. Cool, awesome, sweet man. Thanks for coming on. I'm just gonna play this song real quick. We got to do this this Zoom bullshit. But uh, yeah. Thanks. And uh, for actually, I forgot, I, I fucking forgot because I, I do this every episode, but like I, co- I completely forgot just because we were talking. Um, everybody just make sure, you know, you like and subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, like and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. We got Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, uh, I think Google Play. I think we're pretty much everywhere. So yeah, just like follow on all those, like and subscribe to YouTube. Um, you know, if you're watching, comment down below. Tell us, you know, what you want to see. Anybody, anything you want to see next, you know, let us know. And uh, most importantly, just, you know, fucking, you know, keep staying safe, stay healthy, uh, smoke a big fat joint, but don't sh- don't share any joints. Everybody's smoking. Everybody's in the session with their own joint, uh, you know, until further notice. So, yeah, peace and love. Ah, oh, shit, wait. Now, peace and love.